Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to talk to you today about shaping the absence. When I have to present what we do at Interactive Institute, I always find it rather challenging. Yes, we are a no-profit institute with eight studios spread around Sweden, but what is it that we're doing? We work with technology on how to handle this monster that influences our life. We work with interactivity, where interactivity is immediately associated with lights blinking according to some mysterious principle. That is still not enough to explain what we're doing. So what is the core? Interaction design. We strut and fret our hours upon the stage of interaction design, because it is a stage, isn't it? The world is looking at us, or better, at the future that we are foreseeing, constructing, longing, fearing, shaping. Yes, we are shapers. As our ancestors, we shape the clay of the future. And we live in exciting times where materiality is crumbling between our fingers into dust of ungraspable intelligence. They called it miniaturization, sensor chips, actuators, transistors, the digital. And then the gravity is lost. The clay that we shape nowadays does not bump onto the floor when it falls. Our senses are confused. We envision something, we design it, and it makes no noise when it falls. It used to bump on the floor. Tiles could crack, feet could get hurt. And a sudden vertigo hits those who are used to gravity in materiality. So what happens now? How do I shape the nowadays clay if my senses are confused? How do I shape it so that it makes sense to my body, to the body of others, so that it appeals the senses, so that it makes sense? Sense is lost in a deafening silence. Then, the reasonable ones invoke a changing paradigm. The pessimists call for the apocalypse of values. The eclectics mix all the new as they always did. The optimists perceive and get excited by the challenge of immateriality. The absence. Maybe this is what we should look into, shaping now. Maybe this is what we're trying to do, the absence, where meaning emanates. If I'm talking to you now, where is the meaning? It is not in me, I have no ambition to make sense, and it is not in you, either. It is in the absence between you and me. The space that separates us is loaded with meaning, which fluctuates and gets shaped like vortexes of smoke, while traveling, bubbling, floating between you and me. And based on who you are, where you come from, what you can do, what you can make, your values, your culture, this meaning will drip bringing some droplets of my story to leak onto yours and merge and completely build a new one, richer, completely different. And here comes the idea, which I don't want to claim as mine, I just want to put it under the lens and dissect it to you for a few minutes. Maybe this is what we should do. Stop thinking of materiality and stop wanting to transform design what is material. Maybe we should focus on transforming the absence. Designing the space which is in between people, how that space behaves, reacts, breathes, and that space will bounce around material bits, which incidentally and by reaction will also be designed. Let's design the interaction and its qualities, the space and its qualities, how people communicate among them, how they do it through products and systems and buildings, and how do we relate to each other, react to each other. Spaces are absence. The absence in which people can move about, perceive, experience, and therefore conceive between built materials. The interaction is the dynamic vacuum existing between people's bodies and the palpable part of products and systems. Meaning arises exactly in this vacuum which is fluid and changes according to people's moving about in the space. The absence reacts to people, and in this absence, intrinsically meaningful experience emanates. If we want to design for meaning, we might consider to focus on designing the qualities 
of the dynamic absence in a space, no matter how intelligent that is. And the second part of the idea which I believe worth spreading is this. We should design the absence by making. With our hands, with our bodies, through our skills. Kneading the dough of absence and immateriality by playing with the resistance and the ambiguity of materials, textures, words, code. In a symphonic dialogue with immateriality, through materiality, among people. A constant transformational act that involves our skills, educates towards new one, where skills of different people are exchanged, merged in a practice that will change our way of thinking. Omni faber, craftsmen that strive for conscious and responsible transformation by engaging in society, taking responsibility and constantly asking themselves the question, why? And not just the question, how? when they are acting upon reality. How does what we do relate to all this beautiful choreography of potential nonsense? Every time we start a new project, a new adventure, since we're doing applied research, we have to elaborate the grief of a reality check. All the poetry that we're aiming at suffers the brutal shocks of reality. The pain of compromise is the price to put what we design out there in the wild. I would like to share a few examples of work we did that deal with shaping the, ab the absence on different levels. The first is the Academy of Risk, where we prototype risk-taking in the realm of societal transformation. We make invisible patterns visible, exposing what we fear and what blocks us to work towards disruptive transformation. It is an academy where we prototype new practices Languages, policies, codes in various fields, from urban transformation to policy making, from leadership methodologies to educational model or business models. We do it so that changing behaviors and practices is not a jump in the dark, but a bold leap forward. It is a place where we explore the biodynamics of change through making and where we treat real matters for real where there is a process or a procedure that does not work and nobody dares or know how to tackle it, we step in to prototype its evolution in a safe way. In the Academy of Risk, we deal with absence by projecting possibilities onto it and explore the effects. We are designing a platform called Community SOS to empower people within communities to support each other in situations of environmental disasters. The web-based platform will consist of a combination of social media, interactive maps, and a web-based application. By providing such platform, we will contribute to the creation of a robust sense in the communities, a sense of belonging, as well as a stronger sense of autonomy and self-empowerment. Both are key features in a crowded world where it is not always possible and it is not everywhere possible to rely on the help from the system. With a small tool, we contribute to motivating people to give their best and support each other. Community SOS deals with absence in the sense of the absence of connections between people in a specific constellation of space and time. We are redesigning a room in Slipperiet in this building called the War Room where people will not do meetings. Through the principle of embodied sense-making, the space will afford co-creative sessions 
that support the visualization and the materialization of transformative scenarios. And we will involve people that have completely different backgrounds and completely different intentions. We will use the physicality of objects and surfaces to boost ideation. In this process, we deal with absence by letting people sensually engage with objects that envision what is not yet there. We get rid of the presence of meeting rituals, seriousness, titles, hierarchy, language barriers in the search for a meaningful absence to fill in with an unexpected narrative. Together with ABB, we are working on redesigning the control room in industrial plants. Operators have been taken away from the floor and moved to control rooms, where the control of machines is mediated through screens. They lost the physical contact with the machines that they're commanding. And one operator controls more and more machines and processes, and this leads to alienation and loss of motivation. It can be boring, and boredom can lead to errors, and that can be dangerous and have catastrophic effects. Sense is lost in screens. Motivation and pride of the operator's skills are not appealed. We shape the absence by respecting and enticing the operator's skills by tangible controls, which appeals their senses. And one last project, Ballad of Women, which is an interactive installation that treats the theme of fragmentation in women's rights by using three paintings of emblematic women whose role and strength has been misused by history. Fragmentations of opinion, of points of view, became the aesthetic drive of this installation, in which visitors were encouraged to explore possible points of view and had to face the absence of a unique stance on the treated topics. They were provoked to personally engage in the discussion and elaborate their own reflection on it. Ballad of Women deals with the absence of prescription, where the dynamics and the ambiguity of interaction elicit a reflection on the themes that are treated and induce people to choose their point of view. The obsession of producing materiality in large quantities with industrial processes, increasing what is artificial, is a legacy of the modern movement. We tend to think and act as if endorsing this drive towards what is artificial is inevitable. But it is unsustainable. Let's be barbarians about it. Let's change the perspective and go for the unexpected and the unconventional. Let's pretend that we can do it differently. Let's focus on the absence. So it might be that this is what we're striving for at Interactive Institute as interaction designers. We work with our obsession for absence, where absence is not emptiness, because in absence something is missed. And what we miss is not what is not there anymore, but what is not yet there in the absence through making. Thank you.